Hey everybody. So uh, I've started on the P47 project and I had thought of that I wanted to do a Razorback. My interest in the P47, well for the channel and, and, and the P47 in general, there's two there's two issues running here. So I, I watched um, a couple of uh, a string of YouTube videos. Um, I think the author is calls it, they're under the format or under the title of Greg's uh, airplanes and automobiles or something like that. And he did a series on the P forty seven, which was really good, uh, fascinating, and and the the Razorback um, was featured a little bit more than the than the bubble top and and it was always my favorite uh, look for this airplane um, the bubble top you know it does it it's I'm not not to take anything away from it you know there's there's nothing wrong with that profile at all it's it's a powerful looking airplane and and it's it it, it follows along with my appreciation for um, uh, um, what I consider to be the the best of the American warplanes anyway um, my favorites were uh, the F4 Wildcat F4F and the um, and the P40 and kind of for the same reason um, the Navy's um, fighter aircraft effort um, really began and and with the with the F4 Wildcat and it lasted through for the duration they were critical um, especially in use on the smaller Jeep carriers it was really the only fighter that would work with the smaller uh, carriers that they had and they needed a lot of uh, carriers um, for the Pacific War and they couldn't all be massive they couldn't all be enterprise class you know, Lexington, Saratoga, uh, Enterprise, and so on. They needed the little ones, the Coral Sea and so on. They needed the Jeep carriers, and the Wildcat was, you know, pivotal for that, and also for, for the island bases. They, they started with Wildcats, and they ended with them. And the P-40. And, and so what, what, what I was reminded of during the series of videos that I watched was that the P-47 was also there from start to finish and in fact it was capable in in both um, escort and uh, bomber escort and ground attack it, you know once once it was relegated to ground attack and I say relegated I mean it was taken and became the <clears throat> essential ground attack uh, aircraft of the war along with the British um, hawkers that perform that task but with the radial engine and as as stout as this airplane was and um, with its lifting capability it was it was definitely far more durable than any inline engined ground attack vehicle could be so uh, anyway <coughs> I got off on it so I've started the work has commenced and what I'm doing and I, I might have mentioned it in the first video. Is I didn't like this. I didn't. I don't like this. This isn't accurate. This isn't right. This is this divider here between the air scoop and the engine is way too thick. The engine representation is is not good. So I'm not going to use that. I cut that out. And then what I need to do after I remove this is figure out what diameter I can do for an engine. How, how big does my motor need to be? And it's, <clears throat> when you look at this, and that crankcase is tiny, and there are some uh, parts that need to be mounted to the top of it, and I'm, I'm in the early stages still of research, and I, and I know I, I don't usually start a kit before I've taken a look at all of it, but I believe there are two uh, large magneto uh, two large nodes on top of the a crankcase and I'm I'm pretty sure they're magnetos but I I don't know that yet for a fact 
At any rate, you can, you can see that's just way tiny. And uh, this airplane has, uh, I mean, it's a, it's a twin Wasp uh, R2800 engine. Um, and it was one of the biggest radials made at the, you know, in manufacture at the time. So, so what I did was <clears throat> I came up with a circumference of a circle uh, that would fit inside of the back of, of my cowling. And I'm, I'm pretty sure this cowling is designed to fit just over the firewall. So what we end up with is, uh, what is this diameter? It doesn't really matter. All, I, all it needs to be is something that will fit inside the cowling. But it's, um, it's about 3 and a 16th in diameter. Now that's hefty. Now 3 and a 16th, um, I think I got the uh, Williams Brothers engine down to 3 and a quarter when I was inserting um, the cylinders into the crankcase to reduce its diameter uh, to get it back more to a scale size for the Air Express. But I, I think I'll just scratch a uh, build a motor here. I don't, uh, if I were to do a double row, that engine, that Williams Brothers engine would be too thick. Uh, there'd be some other issues involved with that. that I could, might be able to correct the diameter, but I could do nothing about the thickness of those cylinders. So, uh, so once we get a circle, we understand that it'll fit inside of this cowling, and you can kind of see if you look, you can see how I've got about an eighth of an inch around the top and sides there, and that should be that should be plenty. And of course, I can always mount it where I can raise it up just a bit. But if we look at that, and we look at the the outer line here, which is so what I've got is an outer line which would represent the overall diameter of the motor, and then this inner line which would uh, represent the overall diameter of the crankcase bell. So if we look at the outer line, which is the cylinders, the overall diameter of the motor, you can see where it comes up and joins and meets the fuselage, the um, the cowling here, the opening. And what that does, if I if I look straight down and line that up, it gives me a line to go to for the divider for the air scoop. So now when I make a a piece of, uh, and I'll probably just use my um, sheet balsa and a sixteenth, maybe laminate two sixteenth inch thick pieces, get a, get up to about an eighth of an inch thickness, and then we'll just bend that in here, leaving that cowl scoop opening below. So we'll just have it complete this circle right here, and then I can put the two lower dividers into it that you see here. So we want something that looks more like this and, and a lot less uh, a lot less like this. We don't want this at all. Right? That's not right. That's what you want. This nice thin line here, the two dividers, and an open channel straight back to the uh, to the supercharger and to the two oil coolers on either side. Okay, so that's that's the beginning. That's and again, one of the most notable features, and I talk about this in some of the other videos, is when you're building an airplane, you take a look at its most important features, main features. And then with the P-47, that's the shape and, and and the opening here of the cowl. It's the shape of these wings, and it's that torpedo smooth, barrel shaped fuselage. Whether you're doing the Razorback version or the bubble top. Now, I talked about the bubble top. I wanted to do that, but my problem is the canopy. I I can't. I'm not into uh, vacuum forming. I'm. I've never tried it. I don't want to start on this project fiddling with that, starting from scratch and, and trying to figure that out. Um, and then the other thing was, oh, I really. I mean, when it comes down to it, a Thunderbolt is a Thunderbolt. Um, I don't know. I, I, I really did want to take a look at making a, a Razorback, but I think what I'll do for the channel, in the interest of that's what it was, it was for, in the interest of getting a, a project going, <laughs> which I need to do. And the other thing is, I've noted that the projects that I've done so far are mostly civilian. and. 
they don't draw too much interest. Um, of all of the airplanes that I've posted or built, the only one that's, I mean, gotten the most, the one that's gotten the most attention is one I didn't actually build on the channel. It's just I put a a collage of uh, of build photographs of a P40, and those have the, the most. I mean, the most interest have that, that's gained more interest than the, than the similar videos of the other aircraft. And I know for a fact that warbirds tend to generate more interest. And I had talked about not being interested in warbirds so much anymore. Um, but you know, these were significant historical. Uh, machines and they were a derivative of the racing airplanes of the 30s which is why my interest led you know led me there I, I wanted to build some of those aircraft because they were significant in advancing aviation from really just fabric covered kites to metal clad and um, essentially much more efficient uh, and viable, long, uh, reliable aircraft. So that's that was another motivator for um, bringing the Warbird in and the P-47, a significant aircraft of the U.S. effort. They fought in both theaters. They were in the war and the effort from the beginning to the very end in one iteration or another. Uh, they took on every task, air superiority, um, escort, bomber escort, and ground attack. They did, they did every, everything that was, um, that there was to be done. I think they handled photo recon, or photo reconnaissance as well. I'm pretty sure they did. So I wanted to, I want to cover the P-47. And I'm not sure what livery it'll be in. I like this one. I like uh, the Gabreski story. I also like um, the John Eagleston uh, story. Uh, Glenn, sorry, Glenn Eagleston um, story. That's the yellow with the skull and crossbones. Um, and there's a, there's some interesting history with, with that aviator as well. Um, so... I'm not sure how I'm going to finish the airplane. It really kind of depends on how the build goes, I think, at this point. Just, just you know, I kind of do that sometimes. I, I don't fixate too much on livery as I do on the airframe. And then we try to, typically, I mean, you know, in the case of the Air Express and the Waddell Williams uh, Gilmore Racer, I mean, those were going to happen and they were going to be finished in those liveries. And that, that, is, that was the motivator. As much as the Air Express was self-motivation, uh, self, you know, self-motivating, and and so on, um, I want I, I did want that livery specifically, and that was a reason for building it. This airplane and some of the others, um, I can wait until I see how uh, the airplane looks, and then take all of that time while I'm working away on it to to figure out exactly what I want to do with the. Uh, with the paint scheme and livery. The Gabreski uh, paint is nice. <clears throat> so we'll see. Um, anyway, this is, uh, I guess this could be my uh, first build video of this project, uh, part one, maybe. Maybe that's how I'll, I'll post it. All right, um, as far as uh, everything that goes with the airplane, the, uh, it supposedly has an opening canopy, um, retractable landing gear. I looked at the landing gear drawings. I don't like the way uh, they've bent the wire uh, in order to, to handle that. I want this landing gear to look scale, completely scale. So if I decide to do retracts on it, I'll have to engineer that. Um, I think I do want working flaps so I can just, or, or I'll just set them at, at a position of, of probably landing. Um, but with posable flaps, posable landing gear, and an opening canopy, I can either hang the airplane as if in flight or I can put it on a shelf, gear down, flaps down, canopy open, that kind of thing. So it's just, 
And I like the challenge. And you guys know I talk about that a lot. It's not that I, whether I want these features or not, so much as I want to take it on and see if I can make it work and look at it as a challenge more than anything else. All right. So uh, I, don't know, I think I did the uh, unboxing, looked at the plans, looked at the um, materials, uh, the Gillow deco uh, decal sheet again. I don't know why they use this lighter blue um, on the insignia like that. I, and the decals are generally poor um, with lots of silvering and they don't really adhere well to to my finishes anyway. So I might have Callie uh, just redo this for me in the her method. But that, that still remains to be seen too. I'm not yeah, I don't know how much I want to lay out for this project. Again, a lot of that will come down to how the project goes and how it comes together. All right, so thanks for watching, and there will be more to follow. Thank you.